I, I believe that sometimes you get this kind of uh, reports at your stations uh, on persons who are intending to commit suicide or suspected to wanting to commit suicide. What do you do in situations like that? In, in, in most cases, you may not even get to know that someone wants to commit suicide. That is why I told you that we are in a climb where when people suffer depression, they bottle the top. Um, we don't even believe, as I said, that African or black people suffer depression. They keep it to themselves. Um, they, they look at the case of the doctor that killed herself at a point in time, that there were controversies. So there are some people that bottle things up, and every opportunity, they watch people around them and, you know, just move to a corner or one hidden place and do what they want to do. The more we share... Um, our feelings. The more we recognize that depression is real, uh, the better for the country. And I think that is where education needs to come in, on people learning how to talk out and how to talk to each other. Yeah, Mr. Oshini, uh could you also tell us, um, you know, you, you also did say the driver was saying that he appeared that though he had an emergency, the way he beckoned on the driver to stop. Did he actually receive a phone call and did he ease himself before he plunged? As I told you, the account of the driver is not about the call that he had emergency. Uh, the account of the mother, as I told you, was that they were at home in the morning, um, in the afternoon. They were even in the family prayer prayer meeting with the pastor. And the mother said she went into the kitchen um, to look at what she was preparing. Before she came out, um, he didn't. Find, she didn't find the the, the, uh, the doctor, and she even said she thought that she had gone to, that he had gone to a barber saloon, and she was thinking of oh, I will check him at the barber saloon later, um, only for her to hear later that this has happened. And the direct account of what the driver said was that oh, we got to that point. It's not about he received a phone call for emergency. He said we got to that point, and he said oh, driver park park park. Um, I would like to hear myself, and he felt that um, according to him that he must be seriously pressed, and that was why he stopped the car at that moment. Um, we also saw that uh, while rescue efforts were going on, while police were also there. Uh, first responders, what are we doing to ensure that those areas are cordoned off and also we understand what it means to be cordoned off and not encroach upon some of those areas? Because I see that you have a uh, challenge, even Lassema, have, they all have challenge dealing with us encroaching upon those places. Are you doing something about that? Uh, you know, that's the water. It's, it's not uh, about uh, encroachment. That water space is wide. Um, there are people do, that do things around that place. It's also not expected that the body will be at that particular point that it happened. But I'm telling you, as I said, I was there personally. The police marine team was there immediately. And they were there guarding that area and patrolling that area. And when it comes to this, you also need assistance. We had to also employ local divers who are specialists uh, in that area. So you need assistance of people in that area, people that are used to that terrain, people that are doing their work, but as in uh, making sure that nothing happened to the body. The police marine had been there um, mounting surveillance and doing patrol of that area. And we, we believe, as um, the tradition of uh, water people say, that after about 48 hours, body must float. So we, we want to see what happens um, anytime soon. I was actually talking about his car, because, I mean, the images we see about the car is people all around the car. So if there was anything whatsoever, you may not have met the car the way it was left. So that's what I meant. That's the image we're talking about, his car, not the, the water, actually. You see, uh, you see that spot, um, if you've been there, there's nothing much that you want to preserve at that particular location. Uh, because the what matters most is the account of the driver getting through with him. Um, the telephone is in our possession. Those are the things that matter most. And we took possession of the car almost immediately, because immediately it happened, police are taking 
um, they had moved to that swing and they had taken possession of the car. The car is in our possession. So um, there is nothing to preserve on top of the bridge. Uh, on top of the bridge. Uh, the, that is the car that is the main evidence which was taken over and of course um, the driver. Okay, so is the driver still in uh, police custody? Yes, for now, because we are working with the family. Um, I, I must tell you that um, even the mother is of the opinion that um, um, we, couldn't, uh, we shouldn't hold the driver. Uh, but it's not. Uh, we are looking at getting the driver out um, as of this morning. I won't be able to confirm whether he had left. But as we said, that we are advancing with investigation. It's not about keeping someone physically. It's about um, application of technology to tools, to, to things that we think are used um, in perpetrating the crime. And I believe that the telephone, the answers, we give a lot of information. And the family is key to this with information that they are able to give us. All right, so Mr. Fatai Oshini, Commissioner of Police in Lagos, we appreciate your talking to us this morning.